Hi, this is Algebra 1, Lesson 1 4, Literal Equations and Formulas. In this lesson, we'll be able to rewrite and use literal equations to solve problems. Lesson vocabulary is our formula in literal equation. Let's start with model and discuss. Nora drew a non square rectangle. Then she drew the length of each side from end to end to make a line segment to represent the perimeter. Why is it important that it's a non-square? Because if it's a square, all sides are equal. So you don't have a width or length, you just have a side. But if it's a rectangle, you know that the shorter side is always equal to uh, the width and the longer side is always the length. Part A, write an equation that represents the parameter of the model shown. In order to figure out the parameter, you want to add all the lengths and the widths that that are there. So by how it's shown, you're going to add L plus W plus L plus W. Mm -hmm. And part B, rearrange the order of the size so you can represent the parameter with a different equation. Can we change the orders of length and width? Yeah. Commutative property says that in addition, it shouldn't matter, the answer shouldn't change if you change the order of addition. Let's say L plus L plus W plus W. Is this equation equivalent to our first equation? Yes. See, how many different ways can you express the relationships in parts A and B? How many different ways can we rewrite this? So we can say we have L plus W plus L plus W. That's one way. L plus L plus W plus W is another way. How many more ways can we, can we write this? So there's another way. L plus W plus W plus L, right? And then we can start with W. W plus L plus W plus L. And then W plus W plus L plus L. Or W plus L plus L plus W. So total of six different ways we could express a relationship in parts A and B. Are any of them more useful than the others? Do you think what what do you think is more useful? Um, when we're solving for equation, we have to we have to consider the like terms. We have to combine the like terms eventually. So when you see L plus L plus W and W, W, W plus L plus L, the like terms are already combined together, so we don't have to repeat the step of reordering them. So these two types would be more useful than others because we'll save some steps. Let's record that. There are six different ways. The equations L plus L plus W plus W and W plus W plus L plus L seem more useful than the than others because the lengths and widths are grouped together and these equations can be written simply as 2L plus 2W. And could save some steps in solving them. Okay. So this lesson's essential question is how is rewriting literal equations useful when solving problems? Let's start with example one. Rewrite literal equations. 
Janet wants to calculate the time it takes to earn a certain amount of interest on a principal amount in an investment with simple interest. What equation can she use? A formula, by definition, is an equation that states a relationship between one quantity and one or more other quantities. You can use the simple interest formula I equals PRT, where I represents the interest, P represents the principal amount, R represents the interest rate, and T represents the time, and solve for T. The formula I equals PRT is a literal equation because letters represent both variables and known constants. So literal equation doesn't involve any numerical values. If you have an equation that consists only with variables, that is called literal equations. You can use properties of equality to solve for literal equations for a variable just as you do linear equations. So this equation is for i. If you want to solve for t, you can rearrange them. You can rearrange them so that you do not change the equation, but you, it's easier for you to solve for t by plugging in um, the, other, the other numbers. So when she writes the equation this way, she can use what she knows, i, p, and t, r, to calculate what she needs for t. So what equation can Janet use to calculate the principal amount? In order to calculate the principal amount, we want to isolate p. So using this equation, let's isolate p. p equals the literal equation. See if you can solve it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Are you ready? Yeah, so if you rearrange them, you should get P is equal to I divided by RT. So here, you want to multiply P on both sides so that you have P here, and divide T on both sides so that you have only p isolated here and you will get p is equal to i over r t let's look at example two use literal equations to solve problems in a half hour sarah is meeting her friends at the lake six miles from her house at what average speed must she ride her bike to get there on time step one we're going to solve the distance formula for r remember distance is equal to rate times time so use the distance formula in order to isolate for rate. And then we're going to find the average speed or rate at which Sarah must ride her bike to be on time using the information we have. So half an hour should, represent, should be represented as 0 0.5 hours. So rate is equal to 6 miles divided by half hour, 0 0.5. So the rate is 12 miles per hour. Sarah needs to bike. Uh, Sarah needs to ride her bike at an average speed of 12 miles per hour to get to the lake on time. Okay, now it's your turn. Let's look at try number two. Sarah is going to the store 2.5 miles away. She has only 15 minutes to get there before they close. At what average speed must she ride to get to the store before they close? So figure out the average speed she needs to ride to get to the store before they close. Remember, you need to write the rate in hour. Usually the rate is per hour. So change this minute into an hour. Okay, are you ready for answers? Let's check answers. So you will use the same distance formula, but you will have to use the rate literal equation. So using the rate equation, you have R is equal to D over T. And you know the distance, and you know the time, but you need to change 15 minutes into into hours. So 15 minute is one fourth of an hour. Or 0 0.5 hour. Wait, 0 0.25 hours. OK, 
Okay. So then you're going to write rate as 2.5 miles divided by 0 0.25 hour. And so solving that, you have 250 divided by 25 miles per hour. And if you simplify that, you get 10 miles per hour. So your answer is 10 miles per hour. Okay, let's look at example three, rewriting a formula. A worker at a framing store is making a rectangular frame. He knows that the perimeter of the frame is 144 inches and the length is 40 inches. How can he determine the width of the frame? Step one, you're going to rewrite the perimeter formula, P equals 2L plus 2W in terms of W. So rearrange that so that you, you have isolated the W. W is equal to P, the perimeter, minus 2 times length, divided, all divided by 2. So using the literal equation, you'll fill in the information that you know. Perimeter is 144. The length is 40. So plugging in uh, these information into the variables that are known, we get the equation W is equal to 144 minus 2 times 40, all divided by 2. So solving for that, calculating, we have 32 for the width. So the width of the frame is 32 inches. So it is very helpful to rewrite the literal formula in order to figure out the answer quickly. Let's try number 3. Write the formula for the area of the triangle A equals 1 half times B times H, base times height, in terms of H. That is your first task. And then find the height of the triangle when area is 18 inches square and B is 9 inches. So knowing that the area is 18 inches and the base is 9 inches, figure out the height of the triangle. So if you can do it by yourself, come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? So what is the formula of the area of the triangle when you, uh, when you write it in terms of h? You should have h is equal to 2 times the area divided by base b. So solving for h, you should get, you should plug in 2 times 18 inches square divided by 9 inches will give you 'll we'll give you 2 times 2 times 2 inches which is equal to 4 inches so your answer would be 4 inches and this formula all right let's look at the example in the in the last page. Example four, apply formulas. According to Teo's bread recipe, he should bake the bread at 190 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. His oven measures temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. To what temperature in degrees Fahrenheit should he set his oven? So we have the Celsius formula here. Um, if this is 190 degrees Celsius, we want to figure out what that is for Fahrenheit. So we want to rewrite the Celsius equation for F, Fahrenheit. So use the equation to uh, rearrange for solving for F. So if you can see, if we multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 9 over 5, of 5 over 9, you multiply 9 over 5 and you get rid of 5 over 9 because reciprocals uh, reciprocals when they're multiplied their product is always 1 so then you get to this step and you add 32 on both sides and you get F 
isolated. And this is exactly what you want. So Fahrenheit is calculated by 9 over 5 Celsius plus 32. So using this formula, you can figure out that when it's 190 degrees Celsius, you can set the oven to 374 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a conversion equation. So now try the other way. Try number four. The high temperature on a given winter day is 5 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the temperature in degrees Celsius? So now we know the Fahrenheit. So uh, use the Celsius equation um, from above to figure out the degrees in Celsius if the Fahrenheit is 5. See if you can do it by yourself. Pause the video and come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? You're going to use the exact same formula that you have here in the example above. So using that formula, you're going to plug in what you know. So Celsius is equal to 5 over 9 times 5, which is your Fahrenheit, uh, minus 32. And then you'll solve for the equation. Calculate your parentheses first, that's negative 27, and then you get negative uh, 5 times negative, wait, negative 5 times 3, when you multiply the fractions, and you get negative 15, wait, negative, yeah, negative 15, 5, wait, why did I divide? 5 times 3 and then you get negative 15 and so the temperature in degrees Celsius is negative 15 degrees Celsius alright if you got that correct good job you got it correct Let's summarize our lesson. Literal equations and formulas. Um, so literal equations can use letters for both constants and variables. A formula is a kind of literal equation where one quantity is related to one or more other quantities. To solve for a particular variable in a literal equation, you rewrite the equation isolating the variable. So for example, if you start with b volume equals length times width times height, if you want to solve for height, then you want to isolate h. So h is equal to v divided by lw would be the isolated equation for h. Okay, that was lesson four, literal equations and formulas. If you have any other questions, please ask Ms. King in class. Otherwise, we'll continue with lesson five, solving inequalities in one variable in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.